Hey everybody, welcome. My name's Mike and this is Northeast Nerfer. Tonight's video is going to be a modification guide on none other than the Nerf Zombie Strike Hammer Shot. That's right, the Hammer Shot. This is going to be your basic performance based upgrade. There's not going to be any aesthetics, there's not going to be any paint. I don't have any steel hammers or steel triggers for you. I really wish I did, believe me. That said, we are going to show you how to remove the pegs from the cylinder, how to remove the air restrictor, increase the seal on your plunger, and replace the spring with a 10 kilogram upgrade spring, which I will include the link in the description below. It's from Amazon. You can purchase it. I believe it's like $5.99 in that range. You're going to love it. Anyway, with that said, I hope you enjoy the video. So let's get to it. As you can see, we're here with the hammer shot. There are 12 screws that hold this thing together. I've taken the liberty of removing them so we can go ahead and get started on the modification guide. So we're going to crack this baby open like so and remove that piece. We're going to take out the cylinder first and foremost, kind of pops off there. As you can see, we have a couple of screws in here that are going to hold in this plate. Now there's a pin here and one under here that goes through this whole mechanism and helps hold it all aligned. So you gotta be careful because there's a return spring on your trigger under there. You just don't want it to go flying when you remove it. Oh, my bad, there's a third screw there. Okay. Okay, see there's a little return spring, so I'm going to slide it up off the pin, take the trigger out, take the return spring out, I'm going to slide the pin out. Now, we're going to take this whole mechanism right out, because this is really the whole blaster. You can remove this pin, whether you push it or pull it. There we go. There's our old spring. Pull the whole plunger out, put that aside. Now, if you look down inside there, you can see We've got an obstruction in front of our air restrictor. And down here, we've got the air restrictor. We don't want to ruin this seal that holds up against the cylinder. Be careful of this spring on here. You can take this out, but I'm going to leave it in. It seems nice and sturdy, and it's not really in the way of... What I'm trying to do here is I'm going to break it while I'm doing it. So, we need a good pair of pliers here. Which I'm just going to go with a good needle nose. And we're just going to pull this right on out of here. Actually, I'm going to take the cutters. I'm just going to have at it here. Like I said, you want to be careful not to ruin that seal on the outside edge there. That way you can remove it easier from the back. Where's my knife? We're gonna go down in there and start to cut some of that extra, extra, bleh, obstruction out. Okay, now that I've got it partially cut, oops, we'll add any debris to that. Now, grab it. There. As you can see, I have started to Remove that obstruction down there. I got one post off. Now 
That is the air restrictor, or what's left of it. I've actually managed to save that little spring. Very good, we'll save it as a spare. We don't have quite all the obstruction out yet, so we'll keep going at it. There we go. So it's a little crude as to if you had to clean it up a little bit. But you can kind of see down in there that the obstruction is gone, the air restrictor's out. I'll just clean up those little nubs down inside there. And uh, that'll be nice and clean. I just want to clean off those nubs a little bit. Alright, didn't mess up the seal. Pretty clean in there. So that is the air restrictor and the obstruction removed, which is the most difficult part of this entire upgrade. Now, next, we are going to increase the seal on the plunger here. Basically, we are going to take the rubber grommet off and some simple thread tape. Nylon tape, thread tape, whatever you want to call it. And go right around the head. Now, I only do two wraps. Oops. Careful with it. There's anything more than that, it seems to be pretty full. Doesn't have to be pretty. And we're just trying to get it in that groove there. The down there isn't gonna matter. Now we'll pop the grommet back on. Just get a little tighter seal around there. I'll take a little bit of white lithium grease. <clears throat> Just spew a little on there. Now the reason I go a little bit generous with this is because this is also going to be enough to grease the inside of the tube here. Well, maybe that's a little too much, but Okay, I'll wipe off the excess there. Now we got a well greased, no air restrictor, no nothing in there. Better seal. Wipe the rest of the grease out of the way. Okay, now we can go ahead and reassemble this as we install our new 10 kilogram spring. So. We're gonna take the pins we put in the magnet tray earlier. Hmm. Might be easier to pick them up with these guys. The two pins, because they are very important. And we're gonna install it like so, right through there. And then the other one was here for our trigger mix. Spring back in this sort of fashion. Is this guy going right down over there? And gives us our return spring power. Okay, now why that's in, I'm holding this down because this pressure wants to push it up. I'm gonna put this plate back on. Which, whoops, goes back on like so. Now I can hold that in position and that'll hold my trigger mech and everything together. I'm gonna throw a couple screws in to hold it down. All right, so the mech is back in, the plunger is working. Now, 
I'm going to sneak the spring in. Now you notice it's slightly flanged. Where it gets bigger to one end, smaller to the other. You want the bigger end down here, that so it'll go over the hole and allow the rod to go through when you cock, when you prime it. I'm just going to sneak it on here and push it into position. There we are. We are in position. Oh yeah, lots more power. Okay, so now your main mech is reassembled. You've improved your seal, you've removed the air restrictor, and you've got a much more powerful spring in there. So, we can take the shell back and drop our mech in. Okay. Now, we're going to remove the posts from the cylinder. I'm just going to take a pair of cutters and snip out on the edges. You kind of want to leave those humps there because it's going to catch your darts when you put them in there. But it's just a simple little clip. And look at that, they come right on out. Just like that, all your posts are up. Now you can put whatever size dart you want in there, and you'll have a little less air drag in there. Um, I like to take the uh, cutters and sometimes my little exacto knife and trim up the nubs just so they're not all jagged. Because, like I said, you don't want to remove the nubs completely because they, they catch the dart, help you not overload. That's not too bad. Okay. Then we can take our cylinder, make sure we put it on here. And this little piece here on the end has to go in here. So we will put our put it on there and just drop this in the tip like that. Ah, yes, fits better that way. Once you get that together, you've basically reassembled your blaster, because now you can go ahead and put the outer casing back on. And we'll put all our screws back in. And there, Wow, that has a lot of power. Whew. You have your fully upgraded hammer shot. Well, I hope that modification guide helped you out with your Nerf hammer shot and how to install a 10 kilogram spring and remove the air restrictor and all that happy stuff. I hope it helps you out in your future wars to come. I do have to say I'm very sorry at this current time I cannot offer you an FPS reading or an accurate FPS reading on the Nerf hammer shot with the 10 kilogram spring in it as I do not have a traditional chronograph. I am using the Nerf chrono barrel, modulus chrono barrel to do my chronograph readings and as you can see the Nerf hammer shot doesn't have an end strike attachment so I'll make it kind of rough to get an accurate reading for you. That said, I do plan on getting a traditional chronograph down the road and when I do I will give you a updated FPS reading with a 10 kilogram spring in the Nerf hammer shot. But I will tell you that the thing hits so much harder. It's just incredibly better. Um, this is a stock one right here. Kind of. And this is 10 kilogram. It's got a lot more crack to it. It's definitely going to help you outside with your ranges outside and wind conditions. That said, I definitely think it's worth the $5.99 for the 10 kilogram spring in the Nerf hammer shot. If you like this video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing, and as always, Nerf on and be safe.